Hey, what's up guys? It's Matt with The Movement System. In this video, we're gonna talk about HIT training, high intensity interval training, and five things that you need to know about it. There's a ton of research on high intensity interval training and also a ton of anecdotal evidence and workouts that you'll see online that may or may not actually be HIIT training. So in this video, I actually am going to break down a ton of the research. I analyzed meta-analysis and systematic review articles to pull together some of the actual information about high intensity interval training and what you need to know about it. But before we dive into the video, welcome to Henderson, Nevada. Katie and I moved out to Henderson to train in the desert and explore the West Coast after eight years in Columbus, Ohio. So a little new studio set up. Uh, welcome to the desert. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and dive into it. What is high intensity interval training? High intensity interval training is characterized by brief bouts of very high intensity exercise followed by intermittent recovery. Now, it's really important that this is actually very high intensity exercise. This has to be really over 90% of VO2 max and possibly even over 100% of VO2 max. And you might be wondering, how do we go over 100% of VO2 max? And Basically, VO2 max is the max amount of oxygen that we can consume. So if we go above that, we would be able to work at that workload, but we'd be accumulating oxygen debt or oxygen deficit. So if we're doing bike sprints, treadmill sprints, intense sled pushes, uh, something that's very high intensity, uh, we could be working at a very high heart rate near maximal for a short amount of time, usually around the range of 10 to 30 second intervals with a large amount of rest and that rest is usually at least 10 times the work time. So if we're working for 20 seconds, we'd be resting for about 200 seconds. And another important thing about HIIT training is that typically we're limited in time. So we're not gonna do this for an hour. We're typically gonna do this for maybe eight times those 20 second bouts of really high intensity efforts. So typically a HIIT protocol is around 20 to 30 minutes at the most. So there's been a lot of research done on high intensity interval training. Now, if I wanted to, I could make a video on five benefits of, of HIIT training and five magical things about HIIT training and pull together out of those hundreds of and thousands of research studies, five of them that say that HIIT training is excellent and it was way better than low intensity or moderate intensity training. But instead, I'm going to use the pyramid of evidence and go to the very top of the pyramid and use evidence that's analyzing hundreds of studies into one study and pulling together conclusions based on the broad amount of evidence that's out there. So even though you can find studies that say that HIIT training is great, or you can find studies that say that HIIT training is not very great, what we're analyzing in this video is a compilation of many of those studies and what the overall evidence is actually showing us about HIIT training. All right, so point number one, and this is gonna be surprising to some of you guys, but the overall evidence shows that HIIT training is not superior to moderate intensity steady state training in terms of body fat loss. There are a number of studies that show that HIIT training has better body fat loss, but there are also a number of studies that show that HIIT training has less or the same body fat loss when compared to a moderate intensity steady state intervention. Typically with these studies though, the HIIT training protocol lasts a shorter period of time, for example, 20 minute intervention, whereas the moderate intensity exercise is often a 30 to 40 minute intervention and that's what's compared. So when we compare 20 minutes to 20 minutes, HIIT training probably is better for body fat loss, but when we think about what someone would actually do and the equivalent in the gym, if you go to the gym, you would probably either choose a 20 minute high intensity interval training session or a 30 to 40 minute steady state training session because the effort to those two workouts is a little bit more equivalent than a 20 minute high intensity compared to a 20 minute moderate intensity. But now you might be wondering, well does HIIT training actually improve muscle mass and body composition rather than just focusing on body fat loss? And this study is a meta-analysis meaning that it took thousands of studies and it considered them for the research and eventually selected 47 smaller studies to actually use in this meta-analysis and what it determined was that a low volume high intensity interval training protocol appears to be a time efficient training method for increasing fitness but not for the improvement of body composition meaning that when compared to other moderate intensity training protocols hit training is not superior for improving your body composition that said, this statement does point out some important benefits of HIIT training, which is that with a time efficient training protocol, we can get good cardiovascular fitness adaptations, meaning that we can get improved cardiovascular metrics 
such as stroke volume and cardiac output and muscle oxygenation and improved buffering and things like that in a shorter time period than with moderate intensity training. Now, one thing to point out is that a lot of these studies are done on young, fit, college age, primarily males, because a lot of this university research is done on campus and uh, it's often a availability thing where a lot of males are willing to sign up and do these fitness interventions. So that is a little bit more represented in some of these studies. So that is a factor to consider. And if we do wanna look at a different population, we have to get a little bit more specific with the research we're looking at and actually find research that includes the individuals that we want to study. So this next point is about overweight individuals. So point number three is that for overweight and obese individuals, HIIT training and moderate intensity training have similar benefits to body composition and weight loss. So this research was done on a little bit more of a specific criteria of individuals. And this is important if we want to, as a personal trainer or as a strength coach working with overweight individuals, consider what interventions we should specifically take with them. And what this research basically showed is that there's no significant benefit to doing a HIIT protocol over a moderate intensity protocol. And personally, what I would also take away from this is that we have to consider our individual clients and how they would respond to those two protocols. If those two protocols are gonna get a similar result, we can consider which of the protocols makes sense for our client. Is our client an overweight individual that's very time limited and enjoys high intensity workouts? Or is our client someone who would enjoy a longer moderate intensity workout? Knowing based on the science that those two protocols get you a similar result, we can as a strength coach or trainer make an informed decision to go with what fits their lifestyle best. All right, and for point number four, we're gonna pull a quote right out of the Essentials of Strength Training and Conditioning book. And that is that when combined with other training, high intensity interval training may result in greater stress and risk of injury as a result of overtraining. So one factor to consider, especially when working with athletes, is the intensity of high intensity interval training can add fatigue that moderate intensity or low intensity training might not add to their overall workload. Meaning that adding a high intensity training day to an athlete's already stressful training protocol may add more stress and may put them into that overtraining state whereas adding a moderate to low intensity training day may not have that same amount of fatigue associated with it. So not saying that HIIT training doesn't work for athletes, there's a really good translation of high intensity interval training to high intensity sports and metrics like power and speed and anaerobic threshold, but we also do have to consider the trade-off if they're doing other sport training um, in that fatigue management situation. All right, and point number five, and this one's a really interesting one, and that is metabolic specificity. So what I mean by that is that we adapt to the training that we do. So if we're doing low intensity training, we're gonna get better at the low intensity aerobic processes like fat burning and the cardiovascular adaptations associated with low intensity training. If we do high intensity training, we're gonna have more adaptations associated with the metabolic processes of high intensity efforts, like proton buffering, anaerobic threshold, large motor unit recruitment, all of those things associated with high intensity are going to be upregulated or improved when we do high intensity training. This really just comes down to the principle of specificity of the body responds to the type of training that you're doing. So while it's not always the case, if we want to get better with low intensity training, we're going to want to tailor our training to a little bit more or a higher percentage of low intensity type training. If we wanna get better at high intensity training, we probably wanna cater a little bit more to that in our training because again, that specificity is gonna come into play. Of course, there are other aspects of fatigue management and the individual needs of the athlete, time constraints, uh, and things like that, but specificity really is one of those principles that you wanna keep high on your list in considering whenever you're deciding between moderate, low intensity, or high intensity type training. All right, so overall, hopefully what you get from this is that there are some pros to high intensity training and there's some cons to it. And really you just have to match the needs of the athlete, the time of the season, and all the other factors that are at play here in deciding when to use moderate intensity versus high intensity exercise. If this video has been helpful for you, make sure you smash that like button and subscribe so you don't miss future videos like this. And if you wanna learn more, you can join the Strength Conditioning Study Group on Facebook. Thanks for watching guys. If you have any questions, comment below and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks.